With love and compassion, I say this, if you propose smashing capitalism while being a living, breathing billboard for the very thing you want to smash, you look like an idiot. Woody Show. <laughs> it's another new hour of insensitivity training for a politically correct world, and we welcome you to it. It is Thursday morning. It's uh, May 16th, 2024. I'm Woody. That's Ravy. Hello, Woody. There's Greg Gorey. Yeah, hi. Hello to you, Menace. What is up, Woody? I see Seabass and Sammy. Good morning. And I see some open lines. If you want to call in, 877-44-WOODY is the number. You can be a part of the show whenever you'd like. Never need an invite. 877-44-WOODY. Hit us up with that text over to 22987. Yes, it is that time of year. It's graduation season. Already? And our very own Greg Gorey, top of his class. Oh, yeah. And a class of one. Because there is no <laughs> other like Greg. <laughs> oh, wow. Babe. Oh, babe. Babe. Uh, but yeah, Greg's commencement address for the class of 2024. He does this every year. And he always does a really great job. Thank you. I'm only putting added pressure on him because he really right. worries about it. <laughs> mm. I worry about it a <laughs> it's lot. It's going to be fine. You always do a great job. Thank you. Uh, so that's coming up for you this hour. A lot of people upset with Harrison uh, Bucker. Did you pilfer anything from his speech? For <laughs> your speech? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just transcribe it. <laughs> right. That would have been, oh my God, that, that would have been the idea for the bit. Just to that's transcribe... Right. Harrison Butker's speech. I don't even know what's going on. Harrison Butker's oh the kicker God. for this the Chiefs. Okay. Huge news. Big news. What's on your trending? Yeah. Uh, on my trending? I, this is everywhere. Sports, I wasn't even online yesterday. Just in general. This has been the last couple days. Yeah. Really? He, uh, he was the commencement address speaker at some, it was like a Christian. Oh, oh Christian school. Yeah. Okay. You know, Christian college. Private Christian, whatever. Um, All right. And he was up there and basically said, like, uh, women are good for cooking, making babies. Mm-hmm. And oh. like He really, basically said his wife's. Life didn't begin until she became a mom. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's telling all these, like, you know, graduates, including a lot of women and whatever, yeah. like, hey, look, this is great. Oh, wait, let me add that. But, into but my he's like, I'm yeah. sure you're most excited about your true vocation in life, which is yeah. wife and mother. Right. And, and, and then people want like, him cut from the Chiefs. He's at, like some anti gay spew, some, it was. He really went for it. He was all he did. in. Oh, wow. He did. How can I make notes and add that to yeah. mine? Right? What college right. was he at? I forget the name. I've never heard of this like college before. Like a Benedictine something. Yeah. But it was a Christian up. school. For sure. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they're feeling what he was saying, right? Um, I, I, You know, they have the, the speech the still up online. Is it the that's outraged? Or is it Oh, yeah, because it spread. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and like wildfire. Anybody at the school actually outraged? They want him fined. Well, they want somebody the NFL at the to school him. had to have been outraged because that's how the story got out. Or they post the video. Yeah, post the video. The on some, right. Right. So Jeez. everyone outside the school is it's, outraged. It's been look, a great off season. Well, look, personally, I don't care what he says. Who cares? Yeah, and I'm sure you know? there's plenty a mom out there like, who said their life started when they became a mom. Yeah, Harrison Bucker up there doing a commencement speech changes nothing. You know, it, like, whatever. Let him say whatever he wants. Yeah. Who cares? They just move another on. black eye for the Chiefs. They've just, got Rasheed Rice out there racing. And is now associated yeah, that's breaking the law with something else. And putting people legitimately in danger. Yeah. They had the one Andy Reid's son. Oh yeah. Who crippled the girl for yeah. life. Oh, God. That's see, that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not and I'm I'm not agreeing with uh Harrison Butker. I'm just saying he's got a right to say it. I will be interested. But the people that are like, Oh, cut him from the team and fine him and like for, I, I for draw the line. Fine him. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Just for don't us. agree with it. Yeah. He gave a speech. Still a better like speech it. than that AI one that that one yeah. college oh, had. Uh, <laughs> good God. I'm sure he'll be welcomed at <laughs> all of the away games. Yeah. <laughs> well, like any other team, who cares? Hmm? Well, it comes in there. Yeah, oh, every player gets booed. He's going to get it extra bad. Yeah. I don't think so. I do. Oh, I, I think Not he will. Not at home. Oh, he will. On yeah. the road? Oh, he'll get booed. Oh, he's going to get savaged on the yeah. road. Especially by all the Taylor Swift fans that are there. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> oh, I, oh, that's the other thing. I guess he... As he's, he's called her about out his, specifically, yeah, but he's using like all these like Taylor Swift lyrics. Oh no! In the course, and so it's like probably oh, not boy. feeling that. No, yeah. that's not what Taylor Swift is about. That's gonna yeah. make some problem in the uh, in the locker room. Yeah. Um, so these uh, these commencement addresses, you know, it's all about like, hey, taking your life experience. Jerry Seinfeld, I thought, did a really good job, even though um, that got disrupted. People walked out. People walked out of that part of the whole, you know, Palestine Israel mm-hmm. thing. Right. Uh, but I thought I watched a little bit of his speech. I thought he did a really good job. 
But um, it's always about like, hey, here's my experience. Here's what you should be. This, I, I'm so much further ahead and down the road on this whole thing. This is where your perspective should be, and this is what you should be thinking about, and has have focus and right. Blah 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 blah. But I saw this thing because you know people over sixty, they're warning younger people of things that they wasted too much time on mm. when they were in their thirties, forties, and even fifties. So this is again people over sixty. Okay. So this could even benefit someone like Ravy, you know. Good. And Good. Greg. <laughs> what am I wasting my time on? I know, on? I need to hear yeah, this. Yeah, you might be wasting time on building social status and shopping for things. Ah, agreed. Mm. Okay. You might be wasting time trying so hard to be friends with people who had no time or interest in being friends with you or only wanted your friendship when it was convenient to them. Oh, good oh, one. I've, okay. I, I've done that a few times where I've gone through my phone and I go, yeah. hmm, who are some people who I've made the effort with who are not returning the effort? Right, right. And delete. And or who I just haven't spoken to in forever and it's probably just over. And I just delete. It, it's a spring cleaning of your contacts. Yeah. That seems so not Woody though. Not the deleting them from your life, but deleting them from your phone. Because I thought you would have that mentality of maybe someday yeah, I gotta give them a no. ring. I need to get a hold of them. No, not 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 for something like that. Really? Yeah. My OCD wouldn't allow it. Uh, worrying what other people thought of me and thinking they were judging me. That sounds like Greg nice. to me. Yeah, that's taken. It's taken forever to get there. Still working on that. Still work. It's a constant struggle. Uh, older people wish they didn't waste their time. On these things when they were younger, this one says, uh, I wasted far too much time being angry with people who had betrayed me. I've since learned that uh, uh, we give, we get back, and we take, we pay for. That's good. Yeah. That's good so, advice. Yeah. What you, what you, what you right. give, you get. Because it's just a weight on you all the time. And yeah. what you take, you pay for. Yeah. So don't stew in your anger juices. Right. Yeah, I have not learned that one. <laughs> that's one that I'm, I'm still working on. Don't stew. Uh, people pleasing is on there. Yeah, F that. Mm. <laughs> Accumulating stuff. Agree. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, thank God for my wife. She's a Get purger. Get rid of it. Yeah, she's a purger, so. But she's re- also a buyer. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but she'll, like I feel accumulate. like we have the same amount of stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. Time. So, so we're not accumulating yeah, stuff. Right. Yeah. We purge it, and right. we buy. Uh-huh. Right, exactly. <laughs> keeping it neutral. Uh, this one says, I regret spending so much time working and not going on a big overseas trip at least once a year. Mm, nice. I mean, if you can. Yep. Right. Worrying about whether a man liked me or not. My self-esteem was not very high, and I suspect I thought most men I liked were thinking about anything else besides me. Aw. Aw, babe. Aw. Aw. This one says, uh, don't waste time being angry over something you can't control. Don't waste time on gossip or negativity. Don't waste time blaming others or your childhood on present bad decisions, behavior, or situations. Hallelujah. I think that's my favorite one. (laughs) Me too. I know somebody who's obsessed with the past and childhood and, oh, it's everybody else's fault. Dude, that was 30 years ago. Wow. Yep. Things you can't control. I've, I've really worked on that over the last couple of years. If I don't have any control over it, I'm really just going out of my way not to worry about it and it's a it's a challenge sometimes sure. absolutely the can most, be the most freeing part is you can't control anything if something really happens what's going to happen to you right you know, there are certain things you com- can't control yeah but to be comfortable with like so focus on that stuff yeah what's the worst case scenario right oh okay i told and you that's what, the best piece of advice that i got from yeah. a, a therapist yeah right. once you uh, realize that it you're totally free yeah the advice from the therapist was okay so if you're worried about number one can you control it if you can't control it, don't worry about it but um what's the worst case in anything what's the worst mm-hmm. case scenario will you be okay like if that does play out will you be okay mm-hmm. if the answer is yes don't worry Dude. about it because you know you'll be okay if, like you'll deal mm-hmm. with it if it ever comes yeah. to comes to light you'll deal with it mm-hmm. but you going in you're going into it knowing that in the worst case scenario i will be okay i thought that was very helpful what if the answer is no will you be okay no well no. then okay then, then worry well then that's something you should worry about or, or work right. on then you have yeah. to work to yeah when it will instead be of okay. just worry older yeah. people people over 60 warning younger people about things that uh, they wasted their time on them when they were, yo- when they were younger this one says i just turned 73 in my 30s, I spent way too much time cleaning. Oh, yeah. Cleaning? <laughs> Amen. I, used to, I used to take a nope. week's vacation from work just to spring clean the house. Oh, what? my God. <laughs> Hell no. Been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Still living that. No. Yeah, yeah. You can hire people to do that. Uh, and then finally, I'll give you one more, and then we got to get to uh, Greg's commencement address. Yes, please. Pace yourself. 
Like, you don't have to hit societal milestones. Life is not linear. Okay. I thought that was pretty That's good, good, too. Yeah. Old people. See, we're wise. Yeah. But these are people <laughs> older than you. <laughs> Still we are them. wise. Yeah. That's why they say the older you get, the smarter your parents get. <laughs> right. That's you know? true. Like, yeah. Yeah, you don't appreciate oh, that, it. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, for most of us, most just of us, we, yeah. yes. Late to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about your stock, yeah. dude. I don't know, dude. <laughs> the cloth from De- which you are cut. Dealing a lot. <laughs> not quite sure. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're gonna take the break. We'll come back and the commencement address for the class of 2024 by our uh, our uh, what, what, our our what's our what, what do they call the person who gives the. Um, Something of honor or the, uh, the the maid of honor? No, oh, not the oh, maid of honor. Keynote honor. speaker. Uh, keynote. Okay. Yeah. Is that, keynote speaker is, that is good. Is that what it be? Sure. I don't know why it sounds wrong, but it, it kind of well, does. Uh, the keynote speaker. What do they call? Greg yeah. Gore. Well, it's uh, graduation season, and a lot of uh, stuff here in the news about you know Jerry Seinfeld yeah, right. being the commencement speaker. Right. How lucky. Harrison Graduation's Butker. getting canceled. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, that sucks. News. But uh, maybe yours did get canceled. Yeah. Right. Well, this is something we do every year. This Greg could be your graduation. Could has be. Uh, prepared a commencement address for the class of 2024. Always wise words. I hope so. From the wisest man in the room, Greg <laughs> Gorey. <laughs> and uh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, you. I give you our keynote speaker, Mr. Gregory Gorey. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Woody. Thank you, everybody. And graduates, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to be speaking to you on this momentous occasion, graduating into what we call the real world, which is just code for decades of monotonous tasks with no end in sight. Taking that step into the real world is the culmination of years and years and thousands upon thousands of dollars. So as I stand behind my make-believe podium, allow me to urge you to hit the ground running, to put your expectations in check, and to know when to bite your lip. But before we delve further into those main tenets, let us address the elephant in the room. And that's not a special appearance by Lizzo. I am referring to the unrest that has been 2024. It's been a year wrought with protest. And said protest has caused lots of division and derision, has even forced some to miss their graduation altogether. All those years and years and thousands and thousands and the joy of graduation taken away at the hands of a few. And to those who have caused division and derision, and to those who plan on doing so in the future, if you perceive an injustice, causing injustice to others is not the answer. If you perceive injustice, don't block traffic. You're causing injustice to the woman driving to work, the man on his way to a job interview, the patient on their way to a hospital. You might even be blocking the person who is on your side and you're therefore causing injustice to the person who perceives the same injustice you're fighting against. Now, if you're outraged with an issue, pouring soup on priceless art, I guarantee you, will not, will not bring people to your side. This kind of alienation will only hurt you in what we call the real world, which is really just code for wanting to keep that little money the feds allow you to hold on to while also wanting lots of stuff. Now, no matter the gravity of the situation or the intense nature of your cause, it was not the fault of Da Vinci. It was not the directive of Rembrandt. It's not the burden of the delivery driver. Don't cause an injustice to those who appreciate their talents and your precious hashtags don't change minds. So hit the ground running. It is action that causes reaction. And by action, I don't mean catchphrases on posters or tent cities in the quad or gluing body parts to an espresso machine or hurling minestrone at the <laughs> Mona Lisa. Instead, run for office, hold a meeting, call your local rep, volunteer, or, you know, be an actor, or be in a band who claims to be green and oh so concerned with the carbon footprint, all the while taking individual Cadillac Escalades to each concert, knowing that thousands of screaming young fans are suckered by your hypocrisy. I recently saw a picture online. It was a young college-age woman. She had a laptop computer. She's typing away, looking at the screen through her Ray-Bans, her Starbucks iced coffee right by her side and her patent leather Doc Martens looked quite new considering they weren't even scuffed up at all. Her jeans deliberately ripped in all the right places by the designer who sold them at a high-end retailer. And there, smack dab in the middle of her $1,700 Apple MacBook was a sticker 
that said, smash capitalism. <laughs> smash capitalism. All right. right. Irony right there. Now, I say this with love and <laughs> compassion because I've been there and I have done that. I jumped on any cause that Bono thought was important. And I patronized a coffee shop named after a homophobic, murderous Cuban revolutionary. So, with love and compassion, I say this. If you propose smashing capitalism while being a living, breathing billboard for the very thing you want to smash, you look like an idiot. <laughs> Put your expectations in check. When you land that first job, guess what? You're not going to earn what those corner office managers earn. And the journey to get that corner office might suck. It might suck more than yet another appearance by Ron Burgundy at yet another roast. The road is long, but everybody has to take that road. So put your expectations in check. Your employer might actually want you in the office. Working remotely does not mean collecting a paycheck and towing your tiny house to Jackson Hole. Being asked to show up and actually do your job doesn't mean your boss is a fascist, which, by the way, is a word that is far too overused. Put your expectations in check and put the people who create those expectations in check. Whoever told you gluten makes you fat was lying. And I'm also sorry, hipsters, but kale is genetically modified food as long uh, as, as everything else. A long list of foods that you eat every day. If somebody preaches about a gender pay gap while telling you there's no such thing as gender, run away. Hmm. And whoever told you raising taxes can affect the actual climate is a liar. And lastly, bite your lip. Many a career has been destroyed and many a job opportunity lost thanks to one stupid tweet. Bite your lip. If you're dealing with a bout of insomnia and you post something pithy like, can't sleep. Logic would dictate you can't sleep because you're scrolling with your eyes endlessly locked on your phone trying to figure out ways to smash capitalism. <laughs> so bite your lip. Or rather, bite the insides of both your cheeks. It makes your face look slimmer. I do it in photos <laughs> sometimes. Pro tip. <laughs> now, I don't mean to preach, but then again, graduation speeches really are just non-denominational sermons that meander. And that is what you're going to do from here on out. And that is meander in the real world, which is really just code for knowing the socially appropriate time to pour a drink. <laughs> it's gluing hands to runways and roadways in the name of oat milk. It's getting stuck in protest traffic. It's idolizing so-called green celebrities whose jets and mansions and yachts all get a free pass because fame. Now the real world often seems like humanity slowly swirling downward into the toilet bowl of insanity. And it often is. So try not to take it too seriously. It will take a long while to learn all those lessons. So just know that sometimes good enough is good enough. I mean, after all, it took me two weeks on and off just to write this dribble. <laughs> <laughs> so congrats, graduates. For you, it is the real world. And for me, it's time to bite my lip. All right, Greg Gorey, ladies and gentlemen. Class of 2024. Congratulations. Nice work, Greg. Thanks, Wood. Nice work. A lot of uh, accolades pouring in for Greg Gore. A couple of people were upset, but I have a feeling those people yeah, are the well. ones that he was talking to. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> they yeah, maybe. Things a little to too something. close to home. That's uh, all. What are oh. they upset over? So there was a story I saw. This woman got tossed around by a bull on a beach in Cabo. I think I, I saw that. I saw that yeah. headline. Because instead of trying to get away from it, she tried to feed it. Oh, oh, smart. No. And people are like, uh, you might not want to do that. The bull ended up goring her, tossed her into the sand before uh, another woman scared the bull away. But like, what a dumbass. First of all, bull on the beach. Right. That's weird. <laughs> but okay, let's say okay, there is a bull on the beach. Okay. It's not a petting zoo. No. Like, don't go try to feed said bull. I would run into the ocean, I guess. Yeah. Probably not going to chase you. The other people are like, you're not doing us any favors. Right. Yeah. This bull's going to keep yeah. coming back. Yeah, you're feeding it. Just right. going to hang wow. out here. It's a wild animal. Yeah, local officials warn that while livestock roaming beaches is common due to nearby ranches, beachgoers yeah. need to be careful around these animals. Well, yeah. yeah. Duh. <laughs> uh, and this has been going around here the last couple of days. 
the difference between a vacation and a trip. This is what I've always said. Yeah, where, that's right. Yeah. You know, there is a difference. Just because you have time off of work does not mean it's a vacation. A vacation means where we're going somewhere and it's a like when we went to uh, on this cruise, that yep. was that was a vacation. That's a vacation. All right. When I'm going to uh, my dad's place over Fourth of July with the kids, so they can see that side of the family, and mm-hmm. that's a trip. Right. It's not that it's not Absolutely. enjoyable. You could enjoy a trip. Sure. Yeah. A but vacation. It's still not a vacation. Yeah. The most common definition people gave for vacation was traveling to relax, while a trip involves traveling for a purpose oh, yeah. or an event. Right. Okay. So the top signs you're on a vacation, not just a trip. You're relaxing. You're spending at least four days away from home. You're completely disconnecting from work. Like it's a trek. You're not just going somewhere nearby like a staycation. Uh-huh. And I thought this one's a little weak as far as a reason, but like you're breaking out of your normal routine. If you're not at your house and you're not going to work and you're not doing the normal, you're, you're out of your yeah. normal routine. That applies yeah. to both. That would apply to both. But now, yeah. vacation rules so much harder over trip. Uh-huh. But I will take either one. I do enjoy going to see your family, but that's the thing. It's like when you're, you know, um, when you're going somewhere and you're trying to relax, that doesn't mean like you're going from place to place to place because you have to go to this reunion and then you got to mm, go yeah. to this yeah. whatever. Yeah. And then you're trying to get too much stuff in. Baby sure. showers. <laughs> baby showers. <laughs> Dude, baby showers so big right now. Yeah. F to the that. Yeah. So that's uh, a couple things there. Don't feed the bulls on the beach. Yeah, good idea. Difference between vacation and trip. Where are you planning to go this summer? Hit us up on the text. Where are you going? 877 Woody. That's 877 Woody. My wife and I are going back to Mexico again. That's right. Nice. We are going to my dad's. Nice. How, how far in advance do you book that? Like when you leave, you just book for the next year? What, Mexico? Yeah. Yeah. We always, you know you're doing it. Yeah. We always book. We always like book. Right like away. we booked this year's trip before we even left the resort last year. Because a lot of times <laughs> they'll give you a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. If you rebook right now, we did the same thing with the cruise. We booked two more cruises. Yeah. And you get money off before little, we got the, got off the boat. Yeah. They have that <laughs> little desk. Yeah. Book the oh, next yeah. cruise. Yeah. While That's you're on the exactly cruise, you're what like, we did. Oh, I'm down. The Woody Show. <laughs> Reading the story about um, this police chief in Maine. Talk about lemons to lemonade, right? Um, he was fired for coming into work drunk. And so now he opened a brewery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, really, really leaned into it. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's pretty funny. God, it's got to be a huge investment. Yeah. Well, I mean, he knows a thing or two, I guess. Uh, I guess. <laughs> he really likes to drink it. <laughs> Just don't drink up all the profits. Good for him. Now, Greg, yeah. uh, you've shown up to work drunk, right? Um, I've shown up to work drunk. Yeah. I don't... Not drunk, no. Oh, buzz? I've, I've, we've drank at work. Yeah. Well, Pro- yeah. Probably still, maybe still buzz from the night before. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but drunk, no. Yeah, he wasn't like uh, sloppy. Yeah, yeah, drinking and then just going into work. No way. Yeah. yeah. You think Greg would do that? I, I yeah. Mean, who do you think I? Am? I don't think I Greg mean, would do that. No. A daily drinker like Greg, it might have happened. No. Uh, yeah, but I mean. Greg does have a drinking problem, much like Ravy has a, a gambling problem. <laughs> right, right. I'm not drinking right He's now. He's not drinking right yeah, now, yeah. and that's a problem. No, but in all seriousness, I, I would never. Greg is way too responsible. No, I would never. I just think you know he went yeah. to a happy hour. He had to you know do a shift after. Like mm, Ravy, no. yeah, Ravy was keeping that uh, bottle of booze right, in a drawer. But I wasn't yeah. drunk. It's just getting a nice. Just buzz drinking on. at work. That's yeah. all. A nice what, buzz what on. It's a big deal. Yeah. Whatever. She's not operating any equipment. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was a functional alcoholic. What's a big deal? Yeah. I was functioning. Yeah. Uh, this is somewhat good news. The number of drug overdoses, deaths in the U.S. dropped in 2023, which that's the first time that's happened since 2018. 107,000 Americans died from ODing last year. That's down from 111,000 in 2022. Oh. And while that sounds good, a little perspective in the article, they're going on about how even the reduced number is four times what it was 20 years ago. Oh. Four times. Yeah. Jeez. Fentanyl, man. That is crazy. Killer. Instant killer. Uh, in other news, workers are cheating on drug tests at the highest rate in decades of the 5.5 million drug screens collected from the general U.S. workforce. 31,000 showed signs of tampering. Oh, my God. And the most common method of tampering was substituting a worker's urine sample with a urine sample from a friend or a pet. I've done it for a pet. A pet? Yeah. (laughs) I've done it for a friend. 
I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 She had that job forever. Yeah. Like 15 years. I wouldn't want to get involved. I would not get involved. You can call me a bad friend all you well, want. I, I, just wanna, I just don't want to be involved. Yeah, but it wasn't like for the same job. I wasn't working for the company. I know, I but just in general, like, I don't want to be, yeah. I don't want to get mixed up in other people's shenanigans. Agreed. I, I won't tell anybody about it. You, you want to give but, your friend? <laughs> I wouldn't give anybody no. any pee, pee because Why? who knows what it would test positive it's not, for? It's not a criminal. <laughs> it's going to test positive for weed. <laughs> I just don't easily. I don't want to be involved in anybody else's shenanigans. <laughs> Somebody else will find it. It wasn't like a legal. I don't have clean thing. pee. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying not I'm going to go to jail. Over it. I don't want to get involved in anybody else's shenanigans. I didn't say like illegal <laughs> activity. Man, it's shenanigans. Oh, my shenanigans. Bad. Well, if you ever need some. Menace I mean, is a nah, good friend. My pee these days, you probably wouldn't want. Right. But you yeah. probably time, don't have clean yeah. pee Yours either. Is, this is pre-discovering marijuana. Yours That's and Ravy's pee would be useless to anybody. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Right. I have useless pee. You do. It's really <laughs> but useless. But before, quality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, swabs. Oh, I'm sorry. Swaps were uh, detected in 6,000 samples. That's a 633% increase. Pee swaps. And the highest rate ever recorded. <laughs> How do employers do that? Do they send you out to an independent lab? Or? I don't know. Look, I've never worked at. A, I've always worked at radio stations. Yeah. I've never yeah. worked at a place where they well, did you drug do testing. It. Oh, I've done it. Yeah, you I would assume they a, send you like lab. to a Quest or something. Yeah, you just go to an office. Yeah. And okay, just do it. Oh yeah. my God, if they did drug testing at radio stations, there'd be mm -hmm. three people. It would all be run by AI. Company. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. Yeah. But AI jocks all day, every day. Right. Yeah, but it was so easy to do because there was a bathroom in the right in the lobby downstairs in the building, and then you just you and, know, and then the friend just had it. You put in it a little, in a bag, little baggy. Yep. Yep. And then upstairs, take the test, pass. Easy. easy. Uh, other headlines today: President Biden and Donald Trump have agreed to two debates. Exciting. Oh, right. Rip. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you see the video? Slovakia's prime minister shot and wounded yeah. yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Attempted assassination. Had to be airlifted to a nearby hospital. The shooter, they tackled him like immediately. Yeah. He just walked up to this barricade, just reached over and started boom, 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 like wow. five or six shots. Dang. And uh, the prime minister took it right in the abdomen. Eesh. Yeah, but he's he's alive. I guess like the next 24 hours or so, they say are the, we'll, we'll tell. Mm. If he's going to make it or not. That's freaky. And then another one of these uh, barges hitting a bridge in Galveston, Texas this time, causing damage to the structure, closing off road access, and for good measure, spilling some oil into the water. Yeah, big oil streak. Yeah. Oh, great. And uh, Safe, the miniature poodle, won the best of show for the 148th Westminster Kennel Club dog show. Oh, man. Nice. A, a miniature, miniature poodle. poodle. Why is it always the roofy well that's the dogs those I know. shows it's like never just like a german shepherd or you know rottweiler it's always a froofy purse dog yep <laughs> yeah well give me like a dog that eats its own poop or something right like you know like, like a, a real dog like a real dog we've done yeah. all that oh with my all God, the look at that dog all fancy <laughs> oh, why God. can't we do with the dogs what greg's <laughs> arguing for here is he wants to do with the dogs what we've done with all the skincare products and makeup stuff it's all like fat chicks with bad acne <laughs> who are on these uh, commercials now? It's no longer beautiful people, yeah, this is right? The... And so, because th this is what normal people look like. Fine, let's see what normal dogs look like. Yeah, for reals dogs. Yeah, I want to see what Actual for reals dogs. dogs. This is one of those pom pom tails and the pom pom right. feet. Yeah, this is the kind of dog yeah. gets its ass kicked for its lunch money. Absolutely, it go it can't go to the pet smart. Do, do like these dogs at the show have to get like their butts inspected and oh, stuff? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, they look at <laughs> yeah, dude. You don't know that. Yeah. No, I know. I'm not watching dog shows, but it looks dog like dog shows rule. He's really handling the. Oh yeah. Back end. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. I was watching a. a what Ravy learned today? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they look at dogs' butts. I was watching a skills thing the other day <laughs> with a dog show where they, you know, they go through all the the mazes and stuff. It's so oh, much those fun to watch. Rule. That's yeah. cool. The, the Westminster cool. dog show stuff sucks. Yeah, I still watch that. Too, Seems like a little hoity-toity. Yeah. With the skills thing, I just don't know. How do you train the dog to go through the, um, like, the pylons, like, super I don't know. quick? Oh, like, weave in They weave in and out. Like, how? Why don't you know. start training your dog? Oh, my uh, dogs are way too dumb. 805 would like Greg to know that a Rottweiler won best in show in 2006. Excellent. 909 mm. saying that uh, a German Shepherd won in 2017. Okay, well, we're due again then. Yeah. It's been a while. I would just like to see 
<laughs> I would I would just like to see, like you said, like a like give me like a normal looking dog. Like like a dog's dog. I don't dog. like poodles at all. And I hear they're really mean too. Poodles? Really? I hear they're really smart. My grandparents had a poodle mm. too. Ugh. And they were they were sweet. They're old people dogs. Yeah. Well, did, yeah. Did they like, do like yeah. grandparents weird haircuts to it? No. Good. Did they Hell dye no. his hair? Hell no. Bro. No Make it way. Pink. But are yeah. these dogs consenting? Because that's my new concern. <laughs> <laughs> what was the poodle? It's like an butt ICP like. show. Show me your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> and you two could win. Yeah. <laughs>